everybody. Welcome back. This is Tinker77. How are you doing? Today we're going to do something a little bit different, and this has to do with uh, a need that I have right now. I have been working on setting up a server using the latest snapshot, which is uh, going to be for the release of 1.13, and it has changed some things when you do your server setups. The thing I'm working on right now is with uh, Enderman and Enderman griefing. If you know about Enderman, they always seem to pick up blocks all the time, like dirt blocks and things, and that's something that we don't want to have on the server. So we need to find a way to turn that off. Now, in previous versions, there used to be a command block that would allow you to um, work with it. You could put a, a command in there, and it would keep the Enderman from griefing you. Typically, we'd be holding a uh, an item that was invisible, so they wouldn't be able to pick up anything else. Uh, now with 1.13, that will no longer work. They've changed how that works. And what they've also introduced is a thing called data packs. So this video is going to be about data packs. And we're going to try to set up everything that we need for our server. And the first one, of course, is going to be the Enderman. So let me uh, get everything set up here. And we're going to get started with this right away. To show you what I'm trying to fix, we're going to spawn in a bunch of Endermans. Let me do that right now. We'll just put a bunch of these guys here. And after a little bit, they're going to start moving, okay? They're going to start moving around, and they already pick up blocks. See that? They pick up the dirt blocks from where we have them down here. We don't want that. We do not want them to pick up blocks. That's something that's a pain. So we're going to try to fix that right now. But before we do, I'd like you to go out there and hit that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I need to get over the thousand limit that YouTube has uh, inflicted upon me. So give me that like. Hit that like button if you like this video. And subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Okay, let's go into Windows and start to figure out how we can get this working, okay? As this is my first time working and showing something in a video that's in Windows, please forgive me. I'm going to try to do this the best I can. In this here, we have on this side, the left side, we have the uh, browser open up with all the information I want to look up. Up here in the top right corner, we have my file system, which I'm out in the data packs folder, and I'll explain that in a second. And then I have Notepad++, which is a great text editor. If you don't have it, I recommend it. It's really, really, really nice. Um, I'll put a link down in the description for Notepad++. So anyway, we're going to go out here to da data packs. And we have to create a data pack to do what we want. And it says right here, you can place the data packs in Minecraft saves, whatever your world is called, data pack. So we're in saves, data pack world is what I named my world, data pack. So this is that folder right there. Now, we need to make a folder here. It says a data pack name. So let's make a new folder here. I'm going to do this really quick. I'm going to do, uh, this is Tinker77 uh, data pack. Okay, we're going to have that. We've done that, and that's great. Okay, so then we have, to, under that, we have a pack.mcmeta, and then all the data for the pack. This pack.mcmeta is kind of like a description of what the pack is, okay? And it has a structure like this. It shows you what the file should look like, okay? So we're going to go out here in the editor, and we're going to start this up. Now, this is in JSON format, which is a, a structured format for um, the text that should be in this file. So I like Notepad++ because it allows us to pick a language, and it kind of is highlighting things. So I'm going to go to J, I'm going to pick JSON. And you can kind of see it did a little change there. And what we're going to do is we're going to start this out. A normal JSON file has a little bit of a curly brace there. We're going to say, and it says here, it says pack. So we'll go pack, and we're going to put that in quotes, okay? And then I'm going to put a curly brace. That means we're going to, this is part of the pack. See how it's kind of indented here? That means we're going to do the same thing over here. Okay, we're going over. Now, the next thing we want is the pack format. Like that. Now, I know that there are formats are based on the version that we're going to be using. And I believe in 1.13, the version is 4. I don't see it listed in here or in any of the information, but that's okay. Okay, so we're going to hit a comma. And now we're going to do the description. So we type in description. Okay. And you can kind of see as I was typing that, it went from like a different color. And that tells me that it's working as uh, compliant with the uh, JSON uh, nomenclature and that sort of thing. Okay, so now we're going to put in here a string for the description, a bunch of characters, and this is uh, no do no Enderman griefing, which is taking a box, right? Now we have to close these braces. Have to kind of like if we open them, we got to close them. So we'll close that, and we'll close that. Now the file is there. We have to save it. And we've got this is the location. I'm going to copy this location here. Okay, and we're going to go save. And it's going to go to wherever we want. Looks like I was in the crash reports. Uh, we're going to just go right here. We've got JSON file. And I'm going to call it, uh, this is pack.mcmeta. Okay. 
Now it says it's going to save it as a type of JSON. I don't want to do that because it'll put JSON at the end. I just want to say all types that will not then give it a type and we'll save it as pack.mc meta. And there's our file. That's the first part that kind of describes our pack. But now we have to tell what the pack actually does. All right. In 18w02a, in that snapshot, they added a new block tag, which is Minecraft Enderman Holdable. This allows you to change what an Enderman can hold. And that's what we're going to be using today. So if we go back over here, you can see that it has this kind of a data structure. There should be a data folder and a namespace folder, and that should be, it tells you down in here, that should be Minecraft namespace should be used when overriding default data, and we are. So this should be Minecraft, and we're going to have a tags, we're going to have a blocks. Okay, so let's make those folders right now. So we have to have a data folder. And then the next one, if you look here, was whatever the namespace, I said that was Minecraft. Okay. And then we'll make another folder. And this is tags. And then we'll go into that one, make a new other folder. And this is the last one. This one's called blocks. Okay. And there we are. Now we're in the blocks folder. So now we have to make a new JSON file based on this Minecraft Enderman holdable. Now it's time to make this Enderman holdable file. This is a JSON file, and we know that it has to go into the blocks folder, which we have here. So let's start this up here. Let's go and change our language just so I can have a little highlighting because I really like that. And we're gonna open this file up, okay? And there we go, we have that. Now what do we put here? We don't know yet. Well, it looks like when you have a tag, which we are in the tags area, you gotta have a replace, false or true. Makes sense, okay? So let's do this real quick here. We'll do a replace. Okay, and we're going to say true. This is going to be replacing the what's in the vanilla that we we're going to be using. This is going to be a new thing. Now, here we have to have values. What are we doing with this? And this is the, the key here is we want to replace. This is Enderman holdable. What do we want them to hold? Nothing. Normally, you would have an array, which is a list of items, which would open up with an open bracket, and you would list those items out. But we don't want any, so we just close it right away. See? So we have no items in here. And we'll just close this out. Now that's the file, that's all we need. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do save and we're gonna go into our data, Minecraft tags blocks. We do want this to be an Enderman or a JSON file and the file name if we go back here is called Enderman Holdable. Like that. And we're gonna hit save. Enderman Holdable.json is out here in the blocks thing. Now this data pack is complete. We are going to be adding more to that in a little bit, but this data pack is complete. So we're gonna jump back into Minecraft and I'm gonna show you how this works. I've just reloaded Minecraft. We're back in our world. You can see we have Endermen that have blocks. That's because the data pack hasn't taken effect because this is already existing, okay? Now if you can look out here, if you do a data pack list, it will say, hey, there are two data packs, vanilla and RT77 data pack, which is great. But these guys are still here. We, let's just make it a fresh start here. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna kill, and we're gonna kill all the entities that are of type, and we're gonna do player. We want everything that's not a player. That's what the exclamation mark means. So we'll tab over that, and here we go. And they're all dead. Now there's some trash there, which are entities. So we'll do it again, and that'll get rid of all the trash. So there we have our playing environment. Now we're gonna start, and we're gonna throw down a bunch of these Endermen. And what'll happen is, these Endermen will just start running around. They'll do whatever they usually do, but they won't be picking up any more of the dirt blocks. And that'll prove that this data pack is working correctly, okay? So let me do that a little bit more here, okay? There's a bunch. So we should have a lot of chances for them to pick up that dirt. And you can see they're kind of ignoring it. They don't see anybody picking up things. We're gonna go just a little bit longer and just look around. And then we're gonna go on to the next step. We're gonna to add to this data pack. We're gonna add another feature that I really wanna do on my multiplayer server. But just watch this a little bit, see if we can see anything. As you can see, nobody's picking up any of the dirt, which is great. The dirt's just staying there, they're ignoring it. This data pack is working beautifully. So now let's add to it. The next thing I wanna do with this data pack is to allow the Ender Dragon, when killed, to drop an Elytra. This will make it easier for the number of players that I have on this server to be able to get an Elytra without having to go and search around. And that's something we kind of agreed to, so it's kind of easy to do. Other servers have done the same thing. So, but how do you make this happen, okay? Well, first I wanna go into my data pack. I've created a, another game called Ender Dragon Test, and we'll see that when I go in. We are in the data packs folder. I'm gonna to go to data pack. Now I'm gonna edit this file right here, okay? Let's bring it over here. 
Now I had it set as no enderman griefing, but I'm just gonna call this the T77 data pack. Okay, because it's gonna have multiple things in it. Uh, you, of course, you can split this out if you'd like, but for me, that's what I want. Okay, so there we go. I've saved that. Now, under here, I'll show you what I have done here, is data and Minecraft. Remember, we set up tags. I'll go in here, blocks, and there's the enderman holdable. That's what we just worked on, okay? Let me go back up to Minecraft. I created a folder called loot underscore tables, okay? And under that, I created a folder called entities. And then I created this file here, Ender Dragon JSON. Let's grab it over here. And you can see here, basically, it says that when it will do a drop, it will give an item, Elytra, and it will give one. Basically, every time the dragon gets killed, it will do that. Does that make sense? So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back in. I'm going to go kill the Ender Dragon and show that it does drop the Elytra. All right, here we go. I'm going to go in, and we're going to start this process. Okay, we're here. Let me go ahead and fight the end dragon, and I'll uh, speed this up with a little time lapse, and then we'll see what it drops, okay? We're getting close. This should be it. Hopefully. Come on. Ah. Maybe not. Okay. There it goes. And you can see right here, the elytra dropped. Okay. And it will spawn the dragon egg like usual. And there it is. So, uh, this part of the data pack is working great. The last thing I want to add to my data pack is the ability for one player to go to sleep and the server resets to the morning. Most of the time when you know it usually just takes everybody to be in bed before it actually advances the time. We want on this multiplayer server to have it just one person can do it. So I've created this in the data pack and I'm going to show you what it is. So if we go out here, this is our data pack. We've still been working on it. I have the under Minecraft. This is where we kind of tie into back under tags again. We had Enderman drops under the, or Enderman pickup under the blocks, but under functions, we have a folder here called functions and a tick.json. If I open this up here, basically it says run under the namespace, one player sleep, run tick. Okay. So if we go back up here, we'll go back up to data. You can see there's another folder called one player sleep. This is the namespace. And then we go all the way down to tag functions tick. Now let's look at this file. This file then is called, and it says, hey, run one player sleep, do the sleep check, okay? So if I go back up to one player sleep, we're in the one player sleep namespace folder, there's a functions. There's two functions in here. The first one is sleep check, okay? MC function, Minecraft function sleep check. Now what this does is, does it executes this statement. If the entities at A means anyone is sleeping, if anyone is sleeping, run this function which is the one player sleep sleep the time away so it does this check every tick and it says hey no one's sleeping no one's sleeping oh wait someone's sleeping i'll run this other function okay sleep time away now this is where kind of i guess the magic you would call it happens we'll bring this over here and i'll show you this okay basically every time this runs which would be every tick it would add in a time of 100 okay then what it does here it says hey if you're first time through or you can sleep for a second Tell everybody, it says tell everybody, at this, or be this person telling everybody else that this person is now sleeping. Just a little text that says is now sleeping. And then if you have been asleep for a certain amount of time, too long, it will clear the weather. That happens sometimes you can get stuck and the weather doesn't clear because it's dark um, and so you don't actually wake up. So if it goes too long, it will then clear the weather so that you wake up. And that will stop the sleep timer, which stops everything from happening. So that's the gist of it. And now we're going to go in and test this on a multiplayer server. All right, here we are. I brought in for this test my camera account, which is the Tinker77 cam. 
And what we're going to do here is we're going to do uh, a sleep test. Okay, so I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go in and do uh, time set midnight. Okay, so it's really dark. It's obviously nighttime. You can see out. You can see the stars. And I'm going to try to sleep. And normally it would have you have everybody have to be sleeping before it goes to the daytime. So I'm going to go to bed. You can see now it says Tinker 77 in yellow. And then it says is now sleeping. And now it's the next day. It's morning and the sun's coming up. You can see things are catching fire. That's good. So that works really well. Now, what happens if Tinker Cam is not here? What if we were a single player and you have this data pack running? Well, let's go look. I'm going to disconnect that him from the uh, server there. Okay, and we're back here. Now they're gone. Okay, so this thing should work the same. What do you think? So let's go back to midnight. There it's dark. It's really dark. You can see a creepers over there. Anyway, we'll go back here. We'll go to sleep. It says it's now sleeping. It advances the time, and there we go. So that's another great part of this data pack. Well, that's it. I have three parts to my data pack. It is the Enderman griefing, which keeps them from picking up blocks. It is the uh, Ender Dragon spawning or dropping uh, Elytras when it dies. And then we have the ability to have multiplayer sleeping in the world on multiplayer servers. So that's what I have for my data pack. Now I'm going to try to make all this available and to make it a download somewhere. I have never done that, so I'll find a place and have that available to be downloaded. And I'll put as much of this in the description as I can below. So please, if you like this video, please click like button. Also, if you like to subscribe to this channel, please subscribe to this channel. I really need those and that would be fantastic. So again, I am Tinker77 and we are going to have some more videos coming up on Vanilla once 1.13 is out. 1.13. Okay? Thanks for joining me. Have a great day and bye-bye.